it's not playing? No, it, it's... Chat, chat. Hello, people. Sorry about the difficulties. Hopefully we're actually streaming right now. <laughs> I need to get my iPad. Sorry guys, trying some new things today, and of course, that always means disaster. Can you hear the music through your headphones? Head I can't hear it. Here we go. I go to my channel, to my chat. We are streaming, aren't we? Okay. So... <laughs> so, yeah, unfortunately we're not able to... Uh, we're not able to actually get a Facebook stream going today because... I don't know, Restream just... They purposefully make their stuff difficult to understand. showing <laughs> that's why we have the intro screen. All right. um no it danny it's not gonna make a difference if you make a new, new, new stream because um we just can't even we can't even get it to stream to restream which is what simultaneously streams up to Facebook and to Twitch. So just not gonna happen. We need the uh There it is, guys. Sorry about that. Now, um, I think we can go on to the regular sound booth theater. We're with my camera and shit. There we go. What's up, y'all? We got, uh, we got another request only today. I think we got the accidental thief. That's the that's that's the cover right now. Um, I didn't get an 
opportunity to go look for the rest of the covers because we were doing other stuff trying to figure out how to get the music to work. Is the music still playing? producing for us today, taking control of the Twitch thingy. Let's see if I can, here we go. I can actually, well, now I can see in Facebook, but obviously we're not streaming to Facebook, so it doesn't matter. Um, man, I, I just don't understand the, the way that, uh, the way that Wirecast is set up. We couldn't figure out how to get um, how to get the, the restream back. We, we went straight to Twitch so we could test out the music, and when we tried to go back to restream, it just didn't work, so, I don't know, driving, driving us insane. But, we got, let's see, what are, what are our requests today? We got the Accidental Thief, obviously. Uh, as you can see from the cover, uh, we also got uh, the Wandering Inn, I believe. If if the uh, if the Facebook if the uh, the the poll hasn't changed since since we shared the post on Lit RPG Society, and then another uh, thing of RWO by Ian Mitchell. So let's jump right on to the accidental thief. And I believe. Uh, the author, or one of the authors, Jamie, are you here uh, on the stream with us? And I, th I believe I saw that uh, Jamie said that he was, um, that his, C was it CJ is his son? Okay, I think we can kill the music now, since we're getting started. Um, would, so that that's an interesting dynamic. Okay, so Jamie's here and Podmedic. I, you know, I I actually looked you up and I saw that uh, I saw that you have an urban fantasy series about about uh, paranormal paramedics. Uh, that looks pretty interesting. Um, it looks like uh, your series did actually pretty well, and um, although I have been concentrating on lit, lit RPG this year, I do want to go back to urban fantasy very soon. Um, I want to start doing the same thing with other genres that I've been doing with lit RPG, which is, you know, get more involved in the community, talk to more people, um, and, uh, you know, try, try and get in in the niche and collect more authors in the genre. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think it's cool that you come from a, an urban fantasy background as far as writing. And I think I think urban fantasy is kind of a, a natural genre progression. Like, lots of... I think most of the big-name guys who have been transitioning to Lit RPG this year are mainly known for their urban fantasy. Like, uh... James Hunter, or uh, J.A. Cipriano, or Domino Finn. Those guys have all been pretty successful in Lit RPG, but they came from Urban Fantasy, so... Yeah, I, I really like the concept, though, of, uh, of uh, paranormal par paramedics, and so if you want to request some of that as well uh, for SBTL, that would be great, and of course we can talk some more about... Um, about audiobooks, you know, producing audiobooks together. Uh, I, I'm, uh, he, you did send me an email, Jamie, and I'm sorry I haven't gotten back to you. Things have been very hectic, but at least, you know, we get to do this. You get to see what I can do with your characters and your book for today. So, and it seems you're getting pretty good reviews on Amazon. Amazon. I think you have like 20 so far, 20 ratings, and uh, you're rated pretty high, and you were ranked, ranked pretty high, so... Um, we'll see how this goes, man. All right, so you got you sent me a document uh, with chapter twenty, and you have directions for a couple of the characters. Let's, characters, let's see. 
voice characterization tips. Hal, 25 years old, IT professional, stuck in the game world of Phanta Phantasma as a rogue. He's an average outgoing guy who's been beaten down by a bit by a job headed nowhere. By this point in the game world, he's having some fun with his abilities and starting to see the way out. Okay. K. Uh oh. All right. I'm. It says spoiler alert, so I'm not gonna read too much of this. Okay. All right. So that's that's some interesting info that I need to consider. I need to shut down some stuff here. Oh no. Sorry guys, I gotta check something. Uh, there we go, that's gone. Cool. Alright, so I need to check. What I need to do is go on Facebook and comment on... Uh, there, I need to comment on the... Oh, well, it's gone. Damn it. Well, I can't do it. Can someone go on Facebook and comment on the shared post uh, that I'm supposed to be streaming to and tell people that they can't, that I'm not going to be able to? I need my water. There it is. I'm cluttering my whole space. Okay, let's go. Junk! Everywhere! I just threw my Kindle on the ground. Good idea. Alright. Chapter 20. It was nearing dark when Hal and Kay left caravansary, left caravansary outfitters with their new gear. Hal was fine with the late hour. It would make it easier to make their way back through town without getting picked up by the increased guard presence. They still had to skirt around several roadblocks where everyone had to submit to a search. This circuitous path led them to a new section of town. Circuitous? Circu circuitous? Circuitous? I think it's circuitous, right? There were a there were tenement buildings on either side that obviously weren't maintained very well. The people who resided there lived in absolute squalor. Okay, so we gotta come up with a voice for Hal. 25-year-old IT professional stuck in the game world of Phantasma as a rogue. So let's try, um... Alright, so let's try for... You know, you know who I really like? The voice actor who did the voice for, um... The main character of Thief. Uh, let's see. It was not quite this deep. Pretty smooth. I think around here. So let me try let me try this one right here. What is this place? Hal asked. And then we gotta go with Kay, who I can't really I can't really tell you anything about it. Okay. So I'm, it's gonna be weird. It's called the Merchant's Gardens, Kay said. In reality, it's where the Merchant Warden keeps people in a state of constant debt by charging them for everything in their lives short of breathing. So, this is the company town concept, Hal said. The bosses own everything, including the general store, so you have to buy everything from them at inflated prices. Pretty much, Kay agreed. Sounds like slavery to me. Hal grumbled. He was lost in his thoughts and didn't see the wagon loaded with iron-bound chests ahead of them. The pair of fugitives turned the corner and faced a group of guards clustered in front of the wagon. There was a thin weasel of a man. There was a thin weasel of a man sitting on the wagon seat. Before he knew it, the strange slot machine of his luck began rattling in Hal's head again. Before he could stop himself, Hal walked into one of the guards from behind. Thanks, Sin. Um, okay. 
into one of the guards. Okay. Hey, you bastard! Watch where you're going! The guard said, pushing Hal. Sorry, friend. My mistake, Hal said. I'll walk around. I'm not your friend. You should know better than to accost a guard of the merchant's warden. I didn't accost you. I bumped into you by accident, Hal said. The slot machine was rumbling away faster in his head now. The guard's companions turned and started to circle around Hal. Kay had backed away and stood nearby in the shadows. Hal tried to keep an eye on all four guards while they circled around him. All of them were armed with wooden cudgels in addition to their swords. You there! Stop distracting my guards, the weaselly man on the wagon said. I have work to do! He needs to be taught a lesson, boss, the first guard said. Be quick about it. I have to get the rent back to the warden, Weasel said. Hal had enough of this. He wasn't going to stand around and get beat down from rude guards. He drew upon his, both his luck and his acrobatic dodge skill at the same time. He dove to one side as soon as the first guard raised his cudgel to strike. Rolling to his feet, Hal found himself next to the horse pulling the rent wagon. The rent wagon or the rent wagon? Hmm. The rent wagon. I think it's the rent w wagon. Something's wrong with the wagon. Oh no! Don, I forgot about our, our rabbit session that we were supposed to do. Sorry. Ah, uh, we should have planned that better. Maybe next week. Or, or not next week because I'm going to be at Dragon Con. The week after. I really want to do that though. It sounds like fun. Sorry. Um... Rolling to his feet, Hal found himself next to the horse pulling the rent wagon. He re he reached up and pulled the rent collect okay, the rent wagon. He reached up and pulled the rent collector down from his seat with one hand, then yelled as loud as he could and slapped the horse on the rump with his other hand. The horse reared and the horse reared in his traces before bolting, pulling the rent wagon along behind it. Hal grabbed a hold of the side of the wagon's seat and pulled himself up as the wagon lurched away. Two of the guards were run down and crushed by the wagon wheels as it was propelled forward by the startled horse. The other two dove out of the way. Five hundred experience points awarded. Five hundred experience points awarded. Level up. Hal smiled. That was easy. He leaned forward and took up the reins. He didn't know, he didn't know much about driving a horse-drawn wagon, let alone how to control one careening along at full speed, so he just held on and hoped the horse knew where it was going. Kay ran from the shadows as he passed by and vaulted up into the seat next to him. Hal, what do you think you're doing? Hold on. I'm kind of making this up as I go along. I was afraid of that. Do you know how to handle the reins? Kay asked. Not really. Uh-oh. Hold on. Hal pulled on one side of the reins and the horse turned the corner ahead. The wagon tilted up on two wheels, nearly toppling over as it followed the horse. Once they were on a straight track again, the wagon slammed back down on all four wheels. Great. You know we can't hide this wagon, Hal. We don't have anywhere to put it. An idea occurred to him. A crazy, yet ingenious idea. I'm not planning on hiding it. I plan on cracking it open. The people need their rent money back. What? The second he said it, the slot machine stopped rattling, and somehow he knew he'd chosen correctly. His luck was with him once again. Hal pulled on the reins and turned up and turned the corner again, bringing the horse and wagon around and heading back up the road to where it started. No! Damn it, sound booth. Uh, twitch, whatever. Okay, mm -hmm. when I get up here to place you. To the, okay. Kay, when I get up here to the place you hopped on, you might want to jump off. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work. Up ahead of them, the rent collector and the two remaining guards stood in the street. The guards had dropped their cudgels and held their swords now. That was fine with Hal. He didn't plan on fighting fair anyway. He shook the reins, slapping them down on the horse's back and spurring it to run faster. As he approached the guards and their boss, Kay jumped off into some brush by the road. Hal hoped he was all right, but he didn't have time to worry about that. This had to be timed perfectly. 
The two guards had seen their buddies squashed, and they were itching for revenge. They didn't want to join them as roadkill either. As the wagon charged as the wagon charged down on them, they scattered, both diving to the same side of the street with their boss. Both diving to the same side of the street with their boss. Hal pulled on the reins at the last instant, yanking the horse to the left. The wagon started to turn, then the harness snapped and the horse ran free. The wagon continued its turn, going up on two wheels and then starting to roll over. Hal used the wagon's momentum to propel himself up and over the guards and their boss. They stared upward as they sailed over them. Then the overturned wagon smashed into them, and the three of them were rolled under the heavy and the three of them were rolled under the heavy projectile. Five hundred experience points awarded. Five hundred experience points awarded. Eight hundred experience points awarded. Landing on the hard-packed dirt drove the air from his lungs, but Hal managed to. Hal, why do I have so much trouble with managed to? Managed to tuck and it's like it's like I have it's like. You know, like there's there's just this rhythm problem I have with it. Hal managed to tuck and roll, absorbing most but not all of the impact. Health damage, health ten. And of course, I got an ad. My stupid. I need to update. I need to find a new damn app for reading these docs. Damn, that hurt. He did manage to jump to his feet and keep running with the momentum he got from the leap. It was a good thing he did. The wagon rolled over several more times before it, before it came to rest where he'd landed. Hal turned as he came to a stop to check his handiwork. He smiled. It worked. The chests in the back had all been crushed in the process. The trail of splintered wood and smashed bodies was lined with glittering coins in the packed dirt of the street. People started to emerge from the nearby tenements, drawn by the noise outside. As soon as they saw the money in the street, they rushed forward, scrambling to recover as much as they could. Hal, you are a one-man wrecking crew, Kay said, limping up to stand beside him. Hal smiled and yelled out to people gathering up the coins. Enjoy and share with your neighbors. The hood has struck again. A cheer went up from the crowd. People began to chant, Hood! 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 Lowering his voice, Hal told Kay, we should probably go. It's always best to leave the scene of the crime before the guard arrives. You think? Kay asked. Come on, Hal said. You have to admit that was pretty spectacular, right? It was terrifying, Kay replied. I'll drive the next time we steal a wagon. Sure, take away all the fun. Hal patted Kay on the back and together they walked from the neighborhood, leaving the happy residents behind them. Hal pulled up his stats and looked them over. He was going to allot two more attribute points and a skill point. He dumped two points into his brawn score, raising his attack and damage scores. He also increased his acrobatic dodge to level four. His stats looked pretty good, and he wasn't finished leveling up yet by a long shot. There was still plenty of opportunity in this town for carnage and experience points. The next opportunity would come when they hit the, mar the merchant's warden for real. That was their next target, Hal decided. The hood was ready to strike again. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Um, what I like about this, it, uh, it kind of reminds me of uh, Secret of the Old Ones. Uh, that's that's one, of, one of the ones I did for Blaze Corvin. Just because there, there's like a, a carriage race scene and there's cool action involved around it. And I like the rogue action as well. So yes, thank you, thank you, Jamie, for uh, for requesting that book. Uh, I hope I hope we see some more of it. Um, it's it seems like fun. It looks like the writing's really tight, and uh, uh, I I like the way everything flows. And I I already like the Hal character. He's kind of I don't know. He's like a reckless kind of smartass rogue, right? Like like the uh, the name implies thief. What is it again? Thief. Ac the accidental thief. So thank you for that request. Um, let's go ahead and take down the image of the accidental thief. Um, you have to go to... Oh, no. No! Oh, yeah, that, that needs to stay there because... 
shit. Okay, so you see the the second one down, that one. What the fuck happened? <laughs> okay, so that makes no sense. Oh, okay. So click one one down from there. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. So click one up. Uh, oh, nope. There we go. One up. Yeah, one up, and then go to the top left. Very top left. No, very nope. Very all the way. All no. There. Now go all the way to the top left of the screen. This. No, no, no. All the way. All up, 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 up. It is all the way up. No, no. All the way. There uh, we go. Got you. Um, and just hit the eyeball on that. Right. There we go. <laughs> uh, but everything else is gone now. There we go. <laughs> okay. Not in here. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the Wandering Inn. I have not even taken a look at this one yet. Um, I don't see it in my email, so probably need to get on to Facebook and find that. Uh, can I even get on Facebook from my Kindle? I don't think so. Maybe. Yeah, I have it. Okay, so I need to look back at all your your comments. I haven't. Okay, there it is. Okay, so Ian put it in in the. Uh, in the chat, but I can't really access that from my from my Kindle. And now Kindle's asking me for a password to Facebook, I'm sure. Yeah, it's logging out. Why are you logging out, Face? No, I don't know my password, you assholes. Oh, shit. This is me not being prepared. Yes, okay, my, my password hasn't changed in years. That's good. <laughs> nope, this is not the right page. Where's the, where's the group? Oh my god, I hate myself. Where's the groups? Where is the groups? <sighs> so I guess you can't access groups through the Facebook app on Kindle. Here we go. Okay, groups. See all. Let's go to the one that's actually relevant. Oh my god, this is so difficult. Why? There it is, at the very bottom. Now I gotta find the poll post. Oh, this is so infuriating. I can't get anywhere. Where's the poll? Here it is. For the wandering in, finally. Guys, I suck at this. Oh my god. I don't, what are you telling me other things for? Okay. No. Son of a bitch, guys. I'm going insane. 
Why can't things ever run smoothly? And it didn't even take me to anything specific. It just went to her page. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mike, can you can you look up the uh where we need to be for the wandering in? It's on the the post for the polls. Um in the Sound Booth Theater Live group, and it, just email it to soundbooththeaterlive at gmail.com. I, I can't, I can't fathom how, how uh, Facebook, how this app works. It's just every time I click on something, it takes me to something I didn't want to go to. It just makes no sense. Kindle needs to figure out how to design apps. Rule number one, when someone clicks on something, they want to go to that and not not that. I think that's a pretty good rule of thumb when it comes to design. <laughs> Maybe I'll just read... Here we go. Thanks, Mike. All right, so 1.09. And let's look at... No, never mind. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. So I don't really know what this is about. Uh, I can't really see the... If there's a description of the whole story or not. Um... But apparently the wandering inn is, um, oh, here we go. An inn is a place to rest, a rest to talk and share stories, or a place to find adventurers, a starting ground for quests and legends. In this world, at least, to Aaron's solstice, an inn seems like a medieval relic from the past. But here she is, running from goblins and trying to s survive in a world full of monsters and magic. She'd be more excited about all of this if everything wasn't trying to kill her. But an inn is what she found, and so that's what she becomes. An inn's keeper who serves drinks to heroes and monsters. Actually, mostly monsters, but it's a living, right? Okay, so, an inn that serves monsters. It's a pretty cool concept. Um, this, this was actually... Uh, this was actually recommended to me by Shemmer Kuznets, who uh, wrote Life Reset, which is a, uh, an audiobook we're working on right now. Um... And then Ian requested it for today, so let's see where this goes. This is 1.09. I'm assuming that means, like, she's a gamer girl from Minnesota. Oh, the author. Okay. Okay, looks like it's in third person. 1.09, I'm assuming that means, like, there's, there's like, different arcs for the series. It's like a serial, right? Um, and uh, so I'm assuming 1.09 means, like, the first arc and then the ninth chapter of that arc, or the ninth installment of that serial, the first arc of the serial. Okay. It was instinctual. The black metal pot flew through the air, even before the, cre the creature finished speaking. What the? Before the creature was struck by the flying pot, it made a very un uncharacteristic, very human, very surprised sound. After it was struck by the pot, it didn't make any sounds at all. The image of the gigantic, skeletal creature wreathed in slime and darkness vanished in an instant. Aaron stared as the much more normal figure of an unconscious young man dressed in gray robes appeared on the ground. He was unconscious and already had a big bruise forming on his forehead. She stared at him. She stared at his robes. Huh. The young man was dreaming. Maybe he was dreaming of something nice. Maybe he was reflecting on his life so far in a life-changing dream of revelations. Either way... The bucket of water woke him up. What? Who dares? 
The young man sat up, rubbing his head. Aaron stared at him. He didn't seem very mage-like. Or that impressive, for that matter. He had pale skin, brown, unkempt hair, and he smelled bad. Actually, that smell was probably his clothes, which didn't look like they'd been washed. Ever. The mage looked up at Aaron and blinked. She stared back. Mm, who's saying this? So you're... So you're gonna hurt me if I don't give you food, huh? Aaron stood up and cracked her knuckles. It really hurt, but she tried not to let it show. The young man raised one finger and pointed at her. It was only slightly trembling. I will have you know I am a mage of great power and I will not be- The mage cut off quickly as Aaron lifted the cast iron pot up with one hand. This, this is a pan. Aaron waved the metal pot in front of the young man's head. She saw him glance at it, and then colored when she realized her mistake. In fact, good mistress, that is in fact. If I say it's a pan, it's a pan. The important part is that I'll hit you with it if you try anything. Oh, really? The mage sneered at her. His eyes were on her pot, but they dipped into a belt at her. But they dipped into into a belt at his waist. Uh. What? Hold on. His eyes were on her pot, but they dipped into a belt at his waist. Okay, so he looked from, okay, her pot to his belt. Hey, stop that! He ignored her and mumbled something. At once, he vanished. A booming echo reverberated throughout the room. Behold my pot! Aaron swung her pot in the space where the mage had vanished. Clung! Ow! The mage reappeared, clutching at the side of his face. Aaron raised her pot again, and he raised his hands defensively. Try that again. Uh, no. Try that again, and I'll hit you harder. Now look, there's no need for violence. I can see that you are no ordinary plebeian... Plebeian? Ple... Ple... I can, I can see that you are no ordinary plebeian fool, but an extraordinary plebeian. <laughs> Believe me when I say that is a high compliment from a practice of the arcane such as I. Practicer? Maybe? Aaron glared. I know what plebeian means. Ah, uh, one more insult or stupid little invisibility spell and I'll break something. The mage looked surprised. You... you could tell it was an invisibility spell? Aaron rolled her eyes. What else could it be? The mage blinked at her. Then he muttered to himself in a not-quite whisper. <sighs> How astute. She's quite intelligent for an innkeeper. Aaron glared. He coughed and avoided her gaze. <clears throat> well, I shall be going. He made a show of standing up and brushing down his robes. Quite a lot of dirt and grime fell to the inn's floor. Aaron stared at it and glared at him harder. He swept her a deep bow and gave her a charming smile. Or what he probably thought was one. My apologies, good innkeep, for all these misunderstandings. Please accept this recompense for your wasted time. He reached into the pocket of his robes and produced a few bronze coins. He made to offer them to Aaron, but when she made no move, he placed them on the table. So, you're paying me for trying to scare me and steal food? The mage gave her a winning smile. It did nothing to wipe away Aaron's scowl. Harshly put, good mistress. But yes, I would like to make amends. And I am sure this payment is quite acceptable, is it not? Aaron stared at the four bits of brassy metal. Excuse me. She glanced up at his face. It was quite impassive and betrayed no emotion whatsoever. You're sweating. He began dabbing his forehead with his robe. Am I? Terribly sorry. Let me just, uh... Three more coins appeared in the palm of his hand with a flick of the wrist. It looked like a sleight-of-hand trick. A pretty bad one at that. Some people don't like being threatened by a giant skeletal monster from hell. I see. The number of coins in his palm didn't change. Aaron stared at him. 
some people would take violent offense to being scammed. He blinked once. Traditionally, those who practice magic are beings of great power that should not be crossed. Yeah, and they have fragile bones. I'm sure mages are really scary when they're far away, but wands aren't good at blocking frying pots. He licked his lips, but his face remained calm. He licked his lips, but his face remained calm. Fair point. Let me just amend my fee. A silver coin appeared in the palm of his hand. Aaron narrowed her eyes and said nothing. Another silver coin appeared. And then a third. She crossed her arms. Three more silver coins joined the small pile. He was definitely sweating now. I, uh, hope this is sufficient, good mistress. I'm, of course, willing to pay any dues to, to make amends, but I'm slightly low on coin at the moment. Aaron kept staring. Very reluctantly, he reached into the belt at his side. He pulled out a gold coin and held it up. Would, uh, this do? Aaron relented a tiny bit. She picked up the coins in his hand without taking the gold coin. She thought she heard him sigh in relief, but his face remained impassive. He was still sweating, though. You know, I just wanted to see what would happen if I kept on staring at you. Ah, uh, of course. Well, as a practitioner of the mystic arts, I feel it is always wise to be... generous. It would certainly save time. And you know, if you paid for everything, you wouldn't have to try to scare people to get what you want. If you paid for everything, you wouldn't have to try to scare people to get what you want. Ah, but money is so... mundane. Where would the enjoyment in life be without variety? Uh-huh. And you provide that by threatening people with illusions? Only on occasion. And I quite understand your irate feelings. However, since I believe all is settled, I shall just... He edged away from her and towards the door. Along the way, his stomach rumbled and his ears turned red, but he kept walking. Aaron sighed and came to a rapid decision. Where are you going? His shoulders hunched, and Aaron saw his hand tighten on the door handle. Well, if you have no further need of me, I did pay, after all, so I won't intrude any for- Come back here and I'll feed you. He turned around and blinked at her. Aaron was already going into the kitchen for a plate and cups. Here, blue juice and some blue fruit. I've also got pasta in a pot, but I need to warm that up first. Aaron set the cup and plate down and added three blue fruits on top of it. She expected the mage to dig in immediately or make a snarky comment, but he just, but he just turned pale. Uh, am I supposed to eat this? Yeah, it's food. And I suppose if I don't, you hit me with that pot, correct? He eyes her warily. He eyed her warily. Aaron eyed him back. What are you talking about? I'm giving you food. Are you allergic to the color blue or something? Once again, the face of, the face of her guest seemed caught between wanting to say something and wanting to bolt. He pointed gingerly to the blue fruit. Are you aware that, um... Uh, this fruit is poisonous? Aaron paused, the blue fruit halfway to her lips. Poisonous? He smiled at her, his face a shade paler than before. Highly. The core of the amentous fruit causes painful death within hours if eaten, while the outer rind is safe for con while the outer rind is safe for consumption, the inner seeds are toxic. You are aware of this, right? Um I am now? I see. Want one? He eyed the blue fruit apprehensively. Do I have the option to refuse? Look, it's safe. I've eaten tons of them. Just eat around the core and you'll be fine, okay? He made no move towards the plate. Shall we just say I accept your word? I wouldn't dare question your authority on the subject, good mistress. It's just that- Oh, come on! Aaron stomped into the kitchen and grabbed a knife. The mage flinched when she reappeared with it, but she grabbed one of the fruits and began cutting the outer shell of the fruit away. She left the seed core on the counter and shoved the diced fruit into a plate. 
Two more fruits went the same way before she plonked the plate down in front of him. Here, totally non-poisonous food ready to be eaten. Happy? She glared at him. He gingerly picked up a slice of blue fruit and regarded it apprehensively. I suppose the toxicity would be acceptable if it were just the fruit. Well then, gingerly, he bit into the fruit and chewed. After a few seconds, he swallowed and took another bite. In under a minute, the plate was empty, and he was wiping the blue dribbles off his mouth with a corner of his robe. Aaron set down a plate of, stream of steaming pasta in front of him. You're hungry, aren't you? Well, eat this. My thanks. And it even sounded like genuine thanks. Aaron guessed he was fairly hungry. Actually, now that she looked closer, his robes did seem to hang rather thin on his frame. And if you factored in the dirtiness and general smell he was now giving off, she guessed he was in pretty rough shape. Still, he ate with all the vigor and energy of two men, so she supposed he was still okay. And once she'd refilled his plate, he slowed down. After a while, he stopped, probably to let his stomach expand and regard her. Probably to let his stomach expand and regarded her. So, if I might inquire... What is a delicate flower of effervescence doing in such a locale? <laughs> Let me try that again. So, if I might inquire, what is a delicate flower of effervescence doing in such a locale? Aaron glared at him. Are you trying to sound impressive, or do you actually talk like that? He drew himself upright and looked indignant. How rude! My advanced lexicon and diction is merely a result of my education, not a facade that- Stop it. You sound like an idiot. His eyes narrowed, but Aaron's glare outglared his own. <sighs> Fine. I suppose there's no use attempting to impress anyone who actually has the rudiments of an education. But my question remains. What's a young woman like you doing out here alone? His voice was no less haughty and condescending than before, but at least he wasn't dropping seven-letter word scores every other sentence. Aaron decided that was worth a few more seconds of forbearance. That didn't mean she had to be polite, though. I got lost. He raised an eyebrow. Lost? It takes quite some skill to wander this far into the floodgates. Or are you local? I very much doubt you are, though. Floodgates? What are you talking about? The mage waved a hand around lazily. This area is known as the floodgates. It's because of a lovely natural phenomenon of the geography, and... But you aren't from, the, from here, if you don't know about this area. But I would have guessed as much, since you are human. But I would have guessed as much, since you are human. As far as I can tell. I am one I am completely one hundred percent human, thanks. And why does that make a difference? The locals don't like humans that much. He gulped down a few more noodles while watching her. That's something else you didn't that's something else you didn't know, isn't it? Well, well. A traveler who doesn't know anything about where she is. Teleportation spell? Aaron blinked at him. How'd you guess? Actually, you're only half right. But how'd you guess? He shrugged. It's common. Well, not common exactly, but it's the only explanation I can think of. I suppose you could have also been carried off by one of the local avian species, but they tend to drop their prey and chew their bones. Aaron shuddered. They grow that big? No, don't tell me. I don't want to know. But you're right. It was a teleportation spell. Or something. It didn't feel like a spell, but... And you're an expert on teleportation spells? I see. This time, the sneer on his tone was a bit too pronounced. Aaron's hand twitched towards the pot. I'm not. But I'll just bet those kind of spells make a flash of light or a weird sound. Right? He looked reluctant. Perhaps. And anyways, I didn't see any idiot in robes wait. <clears throat> I didn't see any idiot in robes waving a wand around and shouting abracadabra, and there aren't wizards where I... I mean, I'm sure it wasn't a... 
I just turned the corner and here I was. Aaron trailed off, but the mage's eyes were suddenly filled with interest. He leaned forward in his chair. Really? You just turned a corner and you were in a completely different place? Where to go? Where to go? Yeah, it's been fun and games ever since. He sat back. Fascinating. Fascinating as in, I know what spell that was? He shook his head. No, no. I have no clue what kind of magic would be capable of that, if any. That sounds like a spell which... Well, suffice it to say, I know of only a few living mages who might even attempt such a feat. But if you were the target, it still makes no... But if you were the target, it still makes no sense. Why would anyone waste such a powerful spell on something as mundane as... As... Me? He avoided her gaze. Yes, well, I see you've established yourself quite nicely. This is... is quite a lovely establish establishment you founded. Very quaint. It's not mine. I just found it and somehow became an innkeeper by cleaning up around here. Indeed. That is quite often the case. However, you seem to have taken to it well. This area is inhospitable to most humans. Thanks, I guess. But if it's so lousy, and it is, I totally know, why are you here? He blinked at her. Me? Yes, you. I told you why I'm here. What's a raggedy mage doing scaring people for food? He swept his robes around himself defensively. My physical appearance has nothing to do with- Just answer the question. He looked uncomfortable. I, uh, came here to expand my horizons. This nation, well, collection of city-states is quite hospitable to those people trying to avoid undue attention. Besides, food is plentiful- Food is plentiful if one has certain skills. Like pretending to be a horrible monster? He avoided her gaze. One does what one must to survive. She looked at him. I suppose one does. Does it make you feel good, stealing from innocent people? Her words turned his face bright red. He sat down his fork and pushed his empty plate back. You would not be so quick to judge if you knew more about the people you were defending. Maybe not. But then again, the only two I've met were quite polite, paid for their meal, and didn't try to threaten me when I first met them. Whereas the first human I met was you. Again, Aaron and her guest locked eyes. This time, he broke away first. He got to his feet with a swirl of his robes. I see I've overstayed my welcome. Well, your meal was quite adequate, good mistress. Please accept my heartfelt gratitude. He probably meant to stalk away, but Aaron bar barred his pass. Here. She offered him two blue fruits. He hesitated. Take them. You look thin, and maybe if you eat them, you'll stop bothering other people. Thank you for your business. Come by again, and I'll feed you. Try to scare me, and I'll hit you harder next time. He blinked at her, but accepted the fruits anyway. Um, thank you. They stood there awkwardly for a moment. It occurs to me that I never asked your name. Me? Oh, I'm Aaron. Aaron Solstice. And you are? The mage took a step back and gave her an elegant ba bow. Pretty sure she means bow there. Aaron stared at the blue stain on the sleeve of his robe. Pisces, practitioner of magic, student of Wistrom Academy, specialized in the elementalist and illusionary schools of magic with additional competencies in multiple spell schools. Aaron raised an eyebrow. Good for you. Get a hobby? He hesitated. Got a hobby? He hesitated. Necromancy. The door closed as Aaron stared. Okay, so that was fun. I like this series. I like this already. Um, it's uh, it's charming. I like th I like the banter. It it flows pretty well. As soon as as soon as I figured out exactly who was who, and got the rhythm down, and I kind of like I like Aaron as a character. She seems strong. Uh, strong and relatable. I like uh, the portal fantasy aspect of it. It's really fun. And I can see why people that are into lit RPG would be into it. I don't know if there is any lit RPG 
in this particular... I mean, I'm so used to people requesting lit RPG that I kind of assume there's going to be some, but I didn't see any elements to that here. I saw maybe hints that maybe there might be somewhere, but, um, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I had fun with that one. So, Ian, thanks for requesting that one. And then Ian also requested some more of RWO, which is his, which is his, uh, his work. Here we go. Ian sent it to me. Thank you. Wait, did Ian send that to me or did Mike send it to me? No, I got I got it. Yeah. So, okay. So it looks like we're starting out. Okay, we've done... Uh, we've done... I don't know how... Well, I guess 16 chapters of RWO on this show before. So um, we're just going to keep keep going here. And you wanted 17 through 19, right? Now, Ian writes super short chapters. Um, so this should be easy. And his stuff generally flows pretty quick as well. So here goes. Um, well, okay, let me go ahead and give a little primer for anybody who hasn't uh, checked out this this before or seen me do this on Soundbooth Theater Live. But um, RWO, uh, Dreams of Another World, I can't remember what RWO actually stands for. Real World Online, I think, Dreams of Another World. Um, basically, what this series is about is one character who is the away NPC of a player in an MMO, but this away NPC gains uh, sentience, and it starts trying to play the game on its own. So there's like, there's multiple levels of this craziness, and uh, he, he's he got this, uh, this, I don't know, tutor type character named Dr. Ermind, who's like a, a ripoff of Morpheus from The Matrix. And so there, it's just a comical parallel between this away character, uh, Hashi, and, um, you know, Neo from The Matrix, where he's this NPC being awoken to the fact that, he's, uh, that he is an NPC and that the, his, the world that he lives in is digital. And he even gets to a point where he's able to, <laughs> to possess the body of his player that he's the away character for. And he, like, goes and talks to the character's wife. Um, it gets nutty. So, and this away character is just this nice guy, very Magoo. Um, and so I try to reflect that with the voice. It's mostly in first person. So here goes. I, I think last we left him, uh, Hashi was had created a cat character, right? No. Is that right? Yeah, he created a cat character, and he was being led around by another cat character. Oh, that's right, and then they went over to a new game called Block Miner. <laughs> Alright, so here, here goes. He's in the Block Miner game. Everything in the world is made of cubes. Well, the game is called Block Miner. Blocky people are everywhere. Nameplates over each of them. I'm getting pushed around a lot. I must be standing on the spawn point again. I'm still trying to make sense of what I'm looking at. I guess the green squares on the ground are grass. I think I'm in a park. I see gray paths and what I think are trees. The other players are mostly running towards one of the square arches that are the, edge of the edges of the park. The rest of the park has some fencing between the arches. At the edge of the fence, I can look down a long way. That sure is a long way down. There are vast forests, mountains, deserts, and water as far as I can see. Blocky clouds are overhead. I wonder where Natali is. I hear a ding, and my chat window pops up in the corner of my vision. Natali, I'm here. What are you looking at? Can't you see me? Natali is right in front of me now. Well, at least that's what the nameplate says. She vaguely looks cat-like. It looks more like someone stuck cat stickers on the same blocky shape that all the players have. 
Message. N Natalie. Message to Natalie. I see you. Sorry, I've never been here before. I've been marveling at the squareness of the place. You've mentioned that we can build here? Natalie. Why, why aren't you in world chat? Message from Dr. Ermind. Oh, no. Message to Dr. Ermind. Hey, Dr. Ermind. How do I get a list of the commands for Block Miner? Dr. Ermind. Here's a command list and an FAQ. Message to Dr. Ermind. Thanks. Dr. Ermind. You're welcome. Have fun. Message to Natali. I've got the command list. I'm going to read it for a bit. Natali. Take your time. I'm going AFK for a bit. I read the FAQ. Now I know about mining, crafting, building, caves, and the basics of block miner play. Oh, and how to bring up the main chat. At the end of the FAQ, I see mention of a website. I remember some players back home talking about websites in the World Wide Web. I didn't see any webs when I visited Cathera. Maybe I can ask her about websites when I see her next. Okay, time to mine. Natalie's taking me to her home on the server. We went through one of the arches. She's called it a portal. And we're transported to a road pretty far away. I'm not sure if the coordinate on my HUD's minimap are helpful or not. The day-night cycle here is a lot shorter than the one at home. We run up the road a bit and eventually boarded mine carts at a train station. Natalie had to help me with getting a on a mine cart. Pushing a cart and jumping in seems like a complicated procedure. <laughs> Oh, man, this is giving me Minecraft flashbacks. Oh, man, I forget how I voiced them in their cat people uh, avatars. I'm just going to wing it. Okay, Hashi. Okay, Hashi, we're going to get off at the next station. Why did they make track train tracks instead of a bunch of portals? I asked. I asked you, Natali. No clue, Hashi. We're here. Time to get off. I exit my cart and then chase it down. I asked Natali. What do we do with the carts? Put them in the chest, um... Put them in the chest that has a cart sign. I follow Natali for a little while longer, and we arrive at a small village of wooden homes. There are paths between the houses, and we finally end up at a two-story home made of wood and stone. When I read through the FAQ... It has pictures of the various materials. Natali's house is on, a lar is on a large lot that has several trees and many colored flowers. I have some trouble thinking about those blocky things made of wood and leaves as trees. Inside the house, he has... What? I have some trouble thinking about those blocky things made of wood and leaves. Oh, okay. I have some trouble thinking about those blocky things made of wood and leaves as trees. Inside the house, she has a large room with a sha she has a large room with a chandelier and a loft area with beds. The main room has a seating area with blocky furniture and a carpet with a colorful geometric pattern. Paintings and frames showing block miner items items cover the walls. <laughs> Natali runs up the stairs and stands next to one of the beds in the loft. If you want, Hashi, you can set your blind point here until you make a house and a bed. I really like your house. It's nice. Okay, I've sent my bind point to the bed. Now what? Natali places a chest next to the bed and stands next to it. She tells me, I've put some basic stuff that you might need in the chest. Grab it and let's go explore. I transfer the chest's contents to my inventory and equip the armor she gave me. I've put a sword and a pickaxe in my hotbar. I tell Natali, I'm ready. Onward to Blocky Adventure. Chapter 18. What's that hissing sound? <laughs> I know what it is. Natali threw an axe at me. It didn't hit me, of course. Just landed near my blocky feet. Cut down some trees, Hashi. I'll help you get started with the mysteries of crafting. I put the axe in my heart bar and started chopping down trees. About a dozen trees later... Natali, I've got wood, saplings, and apples. Good. Now make a crafting table and some t torches. I don't have everything for the torches. I just, no I just noticed Natali throwing coal at me. 
Like, I don't know if you, if you guys play Minecraft, but whenever I give people things, like, instead of dragging it from the bar, like, clicking and dragging it from the bar, or from the inventory menu, I just go to the thing in my hotbar, and I hit the single, <laughs> the single, uh, drop button several times. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like I'm barfing up whatever the item is. It's so much more fun that way. I just noticed Natali throwing coal at me. Okay, done. It's starting to get a bit darker outside. Wow, the days are really short here. I stick a torch in the ground. Ah, damn it. I let the twitch go away. Here we go. Q? Is that, is that the, is Q the button for dropping in Minecraft? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, Nitali starts running. No, wait, hold on. Wow, the days are really short here. I stick a torch in the ground. Cool. Nitali starts running. Follow me, Hashi. Let's get to the mine entrance before the monsters come out. I run after Nitali. The mine... Remember not to dig straight down. <laughs> A sign over the mine entrance. <laughs> yes, learned that lesson many times. Well, that mine entrance is pretty... rectangular. We walk down what seems like endless stairs. The stairs are six blocks wide, and the ceiling is four blocks high. Natalia and I are two blocks in height. There are torches every ten blocks or so going down. Natalia tells me... Not much farther. Here we go. Wow. This is a really big room. The floor is covered in torches. There are one by two holes in the wall and the side walls. The room seems like it goes on forever. Natali tells me to pick a spot on the wall and start digging. Place a torch on the wall whenever it gets dark or the mobs will start spawning behind you. Meet you back here in a while. Let me know. Pickaxe in hand. I pick a wall and have at it. Dig. 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 I'm making a long tunnel. Excuse me. It's starting to get dark. Oh yeah, torches. That's better. Natali, if you expose lava, run away from it and dig one block hole in the... F and dig a one block hole in the floor. I look in my inventory and I'm accumulating a lot of cobblestone and some coal. I see some different color stone on the wall and dig it out. Message to Natali. Hey, I found some iron. Natali. Cool, we'll smelt it and make you some iron tools. Message to, N to Natali. I fell down in a pit and it's dark down here. I've got a torch down. Hey, wait. Natali. Are you okay? I heard a boom. Was that you? I'm back near the bed. Some sort of green... <laughs> some sort of green monster ran up to me and started hissing. I guess I died. None of my gear is with me. I hope it wasn't blown up. It was. <laughs> Message to Natali. I was blown up. My gear is missing. I'll meet you back at the mines. Natali is standing next to a chest when I get back to the mines. There were monsters in the dark on my run over, but they didn't kill me. Natali runs over and starts attacking a zombie that was chasing me. It dies pretty quickly and drops something. I look in the chest and find my equipment. It looks pretty damaged, though. Natali continues her lessons. Okay, make a forge and smelt that iron ore. You'll need an iron pickaxe to mine some of the ores we'll find down here. After that, we can explore some caves I found here. Sounds great. This is a lot of fun. Armed with my new shiny pickaxe, I follow Natali down to the caves. Ah, crap. These are kind of spooky. Dark. I see bats flying around and I can hear moans off in the distance. Natalia is placing torches as we go. I guess that might make it easier to find out way out, find out way later. What? I guess that. I guess that might make it easier to find out way later. I guess that makes it easier to find later. 
I'm just, I don't, I don't know, that's confusing me for some reason. We occasionally find zombies and skeletons, and the two of us together fight them off. This is a little different from the other sort of mining, as the ores can be seen on the cave walls. When we find pools of lava, Nitali pours water over them, turning the lava a very dark purple color. That's obsidian. We'll need diamond tools to dig that up. Nitali throws me a bucket and tells me, Fill it with water when we see some. I put the bucket in my hot bar as well. Pretty soon we locate some... Pretty soon we'll locate some diamond. Nitali has me crafted di What? Oh, okay, there's the... The quotation is missing, okay. Fill it with water when we see some. I put the bucket in my hot bar as well. Pretty soon we locate some diamond. Nitali has me craft a diamond pickaxe. Let's go back and mine that obsidian now. What's it good for? I ask her. Making portals to hell. Do you want to check that out? You haven't been there before. Sure. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> How much we got left? Alright, we're almost done here. This is chapter 19. What, what music? This totally... Uh, this is really fun to read because... I haven't played Minecraft in forever, and my favorite shit was always mining and exploring and going through the caves. And, uh, yeah, building Portal portal to Hell was definitely a, a, a fun turning point in that game, too. <laughs> we built our Hellgate. It looks pretty much like the portals near where I came into the game, just a different color. When we, activated it, when we activated it, the center was filled with swirling motes of light. The gate makes an eerie moaning sound. Creepy. Itali motioned to me. Come on, let's go. She jumped into the gate and disappeared. I followed her through. Kind of dark in here. Lakes of lava as far as I can see. Flows of lava fall from somewhere above me. I think that's where the light here is coming from. The ground is red and seems to be on fire in places. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Wow! It is pretty cool, Natali said. I like the music here. What music? Natali asks me. You don't have music? Open up your options page and turn on the music. I do it. I stand for a long while and listen. That's really cool, Natalie. I didn't know about the music option. This really adds to the experience. Do you have music when you aren't playing the game? Sure. I've got a music app and have a few sites I stream music from as well. What do you listen to, Hashi? I like listening to birds. I enjoy talking with people. I listen to the things around me. It helps keep me from tripping over stuff. Hey. I sure do like this music. So, what is there to do here in hell? Nitali looks back towards the hell gate. We don't want to lose the track of the gate. They can be hard to find if we wander too far. I did bring some more obsidian to make another just in case. She starts walking and keeps talking. Well, some monsters are only found here. There are materials that only can be found here for, cra for crafting and potion. <clears throat> there are materials that only can be found here for crafting and potion making. We're still walking across the he the hellscape. I like the music. The view isn't all that interesting, though. Nitali, where where are we going? I did kind of want to go get around the building. Get around to building. I'm sorry, Hashi. We were down in the mines, and I pretty much slid into our, our tour guide autopilot. And I pretty much slid into tour guide autopilot. That's okay, Nitali. I do it all the time. We start heading back to the gate. We spent some time surveying near Nitali's house for a place for me to put a house. Uh, we spent some time surveying near Nitali's house for a place for me to put a for a place for me to put a house. Any i any ideas what sort of house you want? A big one with a lot of rooms. Maybe a secret underground lair? Sure, we can do that. Go mark off where you want your yard and house, and we can get to get to building. I look at the other houses in the area and get an idea of how large the other houses are. Then I mark off an area about twice that large in both directions. A big house. 
Okay, we can do that. Natali places a crafting table, furnace, and a large chest. She also starts placing torches on the ground every so often. Place stone blocks on the ground where you want your bottom floor to be. I start doing it. After a while, Natali looks in on me. Looking good, Hashi. Hey, I've got a class in the morning and it's getting late. Don't forget to watch out for mobs at night if you build at night. I'll see you around. I reply. Take care, Natali. I had a lot of fun today. I hope to see you soon. Let's play together again. I go back to building my house. I wonder if maybe I overdid it regarding size. After a while, I get into a groove. Build, gather materials, build some more, sleep, repeat. Sometimes it rains. Sometimes I stay out too late and the monsters come. I've got a sword. Let them come. <laughs> I'm finishing up one the second I'm finishing up on the second floor when Dr. Ermine shows up. He looks pretty funny in low res and blocky. He looks pretty funny in low res and blocky. Hushy. Nice house. It's very um square. I wanted to remind you that it's time that it's time for you to visit Cathera for your first practice session. Thanks, Dr. Ermind. I've really enjoyed bi working on the house. Building is very peaceful. I like the music on here. I didn't know I could turn on music. I looked around my block minor house. Time to go. Log on to RWO. Okay, so that was just um so that was just a little journey into block minor, which was it's just I I got I don't know, for me it was just a little nostalgia trip to Minecraft. Uh thanks Ian for requesting that one. I think we're going to have to ret retire RWO though from SBTL because that's like 19 whole chapters that we've done and uh we don't want to spoil the whole thing for everybody. I I encourage everybody to go check out Ian Mitchell's uh story. I think Mike put up the links here. Um so you can go check it out there and uh follow him. Um I I think it I think it's getting pretty interesting like how it just keeps getting more meta and investigating more video games, um, changing the way we see it a little bit because we're looking at it from the perspective of a person, of an NPC, right, who doesn't really have a concept of video games because they are a video game. So, <clears throat> anyway, uh, let's see. I didn't. I didn't do a, an ad. I didn't do an ad for what audiobooks are out right now uh, and what we're giving away. There's two remaining. Um, I'm not sure who who uh, got some, but yeah, uh, I don't know. What's what's our latest? We've got Last Warrior of Unagaya is probably our latest, um, and the Skull Throne should be out any time now and within the next week it should be out but it's not out yet so i i guess i could give you a code and you could save it for that um but uh let's see what uh, what else is is new right now uh hero of thera i think came out just recently and um i don't give out copies of unbound death lord because uh that's a podium title and they don't really give me codes to promote with, so I can't really afford to do that. But, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I guess pretty much anything lit RPG I'll, uh, I'll accept uh, as a giveaway for today. Um, but I think that, that does it for us. That's three requests. Um, we'll be putting up a poll for the next request only very soon. But uh, for the next request only, what I want to do is maybe have Andrea and just Andrea Parsno and Justin James take over for one episode. I think that would be really cool. Um, so I'm going to talk to Mike, I'm going to talk to Justin and Andrea and see if what they think of doing that. So um, for now on the on the poll we'll just we'll just say that uh, possibly Andrea or both and um We'll talk to them and see what happens uh, to get it done officially. But be sure to put in requests for anyone who didn't make it on this one. 
uh, make sure uh, you'll be on the next poll already. And um, if you have fan like anyone who's I requested or whose requests I took today, make sure to tell your fans about the the replay when it comes up. And um, uh, if you want to make another request, feel free to. I really enjoyed doing some wandering in. I'd like to do Travel it. Travel guy asked, uh, what's your Dragon Con itinerary? Oh, uh, there's an itinerary. <laughs> um, there's, I, there's like a couple, there's like a couple, uh, there's a couple things that I'm for sure going to. Um, there's like a Tai Chi thing, which is weird. Uh, but I wanted to try it out. Um, and then there is like a voice actors meeting that I'm going to be going to. And there is a panel that Lori, 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 Larry Cohey is going to be on, uh, and James Hunter is going to be on that one as well. So I want to go to that, but I haven't really even looked at what's going to be happening. I figured when I get there, I'll just look at what's available and go, uh, I'm going to that. But a lot of the time, I'm going to be hanging out at the actual Lit RPG booth that Jeffrey Falcon Logue um, secured for us. I'll be hanging out there and basically advertising to people who uh, don't know about Sound Booth Theater. And also, hopefully, there will be people there that have, you know, listened to my stuff and who want to talk and, you know, take pictures and shake hands or whatever. You know, um, I'm really looking forward to meeting Blaze in person and also Jeff Sproul in person. I'm going to be meeting up with Annie Connolly of uh, the Witch's Path series, which is one of my first, um, one of my first urban fantasy series. That the, It was actually the first... I think maybe the only batch of books where I narrate primarily as a female, um, <laughs> which was an uncomfortable at the time, but I got used to it, and that's part of the reason why I'm good at doing female voices. Uh, by the way, this is uh, something that I've been kind of keeping secret, but not really, just I haven't made an announcement yet. Um, but Andrea Parsno is going to... Parsno. It's Parsno. It's got to be Parsno. Okay. I, I I will someday learn how to pronounce your last name correctly every time. I promise. Um, but yeah, Andrea is taking over for me on on that series. She's going to be playing the role of Michelle in the Witch's Path series, and we're going to continue with books four, five, and six. Well, just just four at first to to see how it does. But she's going to be taking over that role. And her and I are going to be doing all the characters. So this is going to be the first Sound Booth Theater book. Unless we take on this other project that I haven't heard back from the, the, the author yet. But this looks like it's going to be the first Sound Booth Theater project that's going to be released with a different narrator other than me as top billing. Um, I'm really excited to do that uh, because it's, it's, you know, it's new territory for us. And uh, it's exactly what we want to do, you know, like expand, start producing more audiobooks, start supporting more more different narrators who, you know, who I believe in personally, um, whose style I believe in personally. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for that. And if you're going to be at Dragon Con, yeah, I'm not going to be doing another Sound Booth Theater Live until I might do something in Dragon Con, at Dragon Con, you know, but it would be something I would be just doing a Facebook live type thing there. So, oh, nice. Uh, Jamie Davis says, my wife just bought the audiobook for Witch's Path. She's looking forward to listening to it. Okay, so don't make too much fun of me. <laughs> I did that, what, two and a half years ago, maybe? So that was when I was first getting good at female voices. So, um, yeah, I hope she enjoys it. Uh, but, yeah, so if you're going to be at Dragon Con, I'll see you there, and I'll probably do something live, it's like, through just the Facebook interface, you know, where you can just stream live. Um, and you know what? I'm actually thinking about even working at the booth with my laptop and having a monitor so that people can see what I'm doing, and I don't know. Dragon Con's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully I'll see some of you guys there. And I'm going to log off now. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me um, and putting up with the clumsy tech bullshit. And I'm sorry to anyone who usually likes to watch um, 
on Facebook, but we just we screwed up the restream today, so we'll figure it out. We'll we'll get back to normal next time. And yeah, that's it. So thanks, guys, and sign off song. Uh, it took too long. You guys didn't request one. I'm getting off. Nope. Sorry. Bye. Peace.